Ken Labam. The purpose of this presentation is to inform and educate you in the proper method of extinguishing incipient stage fires. An incipient stage fire is a fire in its initial or beginning stage, often called first aid fire situation. It is one which can be controlled or extinguished by portable fire extinguishers, class two standpipe, or small hose systems without the need for protective clothing or breathing apparatus. In this tape, I will cover the following topics. Classifications of fires, types of fires and the techniques used to fight them, and the identification and use of first aid extinguishing equipment. An important step in controlling or extinguishing incipient stage fires is the identification and classification of the fire. Each class of fire calls for the right kind of extinguisher. Using the wrong extinguisher is dangerous and may do more harm than good. There are four classifications of fires. The first class is the A-type fire. Class A fires occur in ordinary combustibles, materials such as wood, cloth, and paper. The Class A fire is a deep-seated fire. The most commonly used extinguishing agent is water. Water cools and quenches the burning material. Fires in these materials are also extinguished by special dry chemicals designed for use on Class A, B, and C type fires. These dry chemicals provide a rapid knockdown of flame and form a fire retardant coating which prevents reflash. Extinguishers suitable for Class A fires should be identified by a triangle containing the letter A. If colored, the triangle shall be colored green. The A extinguisher may, in addition to the green triangle, have an identification tag showing a burning trash container and wooden logs. Class B fires occur in flammable liquids such as grease, gasoline, paints, and oil. A blanketing or smothering effect is necessary to extinguish a Class B fire. Carbon dioxide, dry chemical, and foam can be used as extinguishing agents. Extinguishers suitable for Class B fires should be identified by a square containing the letter B. If colored, the square should be red. The B extinguisher may also be identified by a symbol showing a gasoline can and flames. Class C fires occur in electrical equipment. Non-conducting agents must be used. Dry chemical and carbon dioxide are suitable agents for this type of fire. Extinguishers suitable for Class C fires should be identified by a circle containing the letter C. If colored, the circle shall be colored blue. The C extinguisher may also be identified by the symbol showing the plug-in of an electrical cord and the flames of a fire. Class D fires occur in combustible metals such as magnesium, titanium, zirconium, and sodium. The specialized classification uses extinguishing agents and equipment designed specifically to control and extinguish fires of this kind. Normal extinguishing agents generally should not be used on metal fires. There is a danger of increasing the intensity of the fire because the chemical reaction between some of the extinguishing agents and the burning material. Extinguishers suitable for Class D fires should be identified by a five-pointed star containing the letter D. If colored, the star shall be colored yellow. Time is critical in any first aid fire situation. Two or three seconds saved in an actual fire situation can mean the difference between a small or large fire, extinguishment, or disaster. That's why you can't afford to waste time figuring out how to operate available equipment or wondering whether it contains the proper agent necessary to safely extinguish the fire. Let's look at the various types of first aid fire extinguishers, stored pressure units, and cartridge operated units. Let's look first at the stored pressure units. In stored pressure models, the expellent gas and extinguishing agent are stored in a single chamber and discharge is directly controlled by the valve. Various locations are equipped 
with a two and a half gallon pressurized water extinguisher. This extinguisher is good for class A fires only. You will notice that this extinguisher is equipped with a pressure gauge and a sealed ring pin. This allows one to easily check to see if the extinguisher is ready for use. To operate the unit, pull the ring pin. Grasp the nozzle and direct it at the base of the burning material. Squeeze the operating lever. This extinguisher carries a rating of 2A. This means that the extinguisher is capable of extinguishing about 12 pounds of excelsior spread out in layers four feet wide and eight feet long. This extinguisher has a range of 40 feet and has an effective discharge time of 50 seconds. Total weight of the unit is 27 pounds. Hand portable carbon dioxide extinguishers come in two sizes, five pound units and 15 pound units. The name implies how much CO2 the unit contains. CO2 units are rated for class B and class C type fires. Although not equipped with a pressure gauge, the units can be easily inspected by checking the inspection seal on the ring pin. To operate the five pound unit, you must first remove the ring pin, raise the discharge horn in the direction of the fire, squeeze the operating lever. The five pound CO2 unit is rated at five BC. It will put out up to five square feet of burning flammable liquid. The unit has an effective discharge time of 15 seconds and has a range of three to five feet. Total weight of the unit is 18 pounds. To operate the 15 pound CO2 unit, you must first remove the ring pin, grasp the discharge horn by the handle and remove from holder. Squeeze the operating lever. This extinguisher is rated at 10 BC. It is capable of putting out 10 square feet of burning flammable liquids. The extinguisher is expected to last about 25 seconds and has a range of three to eight feet. Total weight of the unit is 45 pounds. Remember to hold the discharge horn by the handle. Hands or fingers may become frostbitten if they come in contact with the discharge horn while operating the unit. Cartridge operated fire extinguishers are made up of two cylinders, one for the expellent gas and one for the extinguishing agent. Before the fire extinguisher can be used, the expellent gas must be mixed with the extinguishing agent. This is done by means of a puncture lever and piping. When the puncture lever is depressed, the expellent cartridge is punctured. The expellent gas is routed through the piping and pressurizes the dry chemical chamber. This forces the agent through the hose and up to the nozzle operating lever. When the operating lever is depressed, dry chemical flows out of the nozzle. At Union Electric Company, three sizes of cartridge operated units are used. The five pound dry chemical, the 20 pound dry chemical, and three models of the 30 dry chemical. To operate the five pound unit, you must first remove the ring pin. This breaks the seal. Remove the hose, push all the way down on the puncture lever and release. Grasp the nozzle operating lever firmly in hand and squeeze. The five pound dry chemical unit is rated at 10 BC. It is capable of putting out 10 square feet of burning flammable liquids. The extinguisher is expected to last 9.5 seconds and has a range of 10 to 12 feet. Total weight of the unit is 12 pounds. To operate the 20 pound unit, you must remove the hose. This breaks the seal. While holding on to the hose, push the puncture lever all the way down and release. Grasp the nozzle operating lever firmly in hand and squeeze. The 20 pound dry chemical unit is rated at 40 BC. It is capable of putting out 40 square feet 
of burning flammable liquid. The extinguisher is expected to last 15 seconds and has a range of 19 to 24 feet. Total weight of the unit is 38 pounds. At this time, Union Electric Company uses three models of the 30 pound dry chemical extinguisher. The 30 model B, the 30 model D, and the 30 model E. The oldest model is the 30B. To operate this unit, remove the ring pin. This breaks the seal. Remove the hose. Push all the way down on the puncture lever and release. Grasp the nozzle and squeeze. The Model 30B extinguisher is rated at 20 BC. It is capable of putting out 20 square feet of burning flammable liquid. The extinguisher is expected to last 15 seconds and has a range of 8 to 10 feet. Total weight of the unit is 54 pounds. The 30 pound D extinguisher. To operate this unit, remove the hose. This breaks the seal. While holding the hose, push the puncture lever all the way down and release. Grasp the nozzle firmly in hand and squeeze. The model 30 D extinguisher is rated at 20 BC. It is capable of putting out 20 square feet of burning flammable liquid. The extinguisher is expected to last 15 seconds and has a range of 8 to 10 feet. Total weight is 54 pounds. The Model 30E extinguisher is the newest model. To operate this unit, first remove the hose. This breaks the seal. While holding the hose, Push the puncture lever all the way down and release. Grasp the nozzle firmly in hand and squeeze. The Model 30E extinguisher is rated at 60 BC. It is capable of putting out 60 square feet of burning flammable liquid. The extinguisher is expected to last 18 seconds and has a range of 18 to 23 feet. Total weight of the unit is 54 pounds. With any extinguisher, give it a quick check before using it. Check the seal. Be sure that it is intact. Lift the extinguisher. If the seal is broken or if the extinguisher feels extremely light, don't attempt to use it. Locate a second extinguisher or evacuate the area. The most important element of any fire training program is teaching the trainee how to apply the extinguishing agent correctly. In this section, we'll look at how to put out basic types of fires. A Class A fire requires a water extinguisher. Apply the water stream directly to the burning material. Aim at the base of the fire. Never follow the flames up. An A fire is a deep-seated fire, and you have to work to the burning embers deep inside the fire. The fire will require to be broken apart and direct the stream directly at the broken it, burning embers. When complete, back away and watch for a reflash. This type of fire requires two firefighters. Stand shoulder to shoulder, approach the fire from the upwind side, holding the nozzles at a 45 degree angle. Direct both streams of dry chemical six inches in front of the lip of the fire. The person on the right works three quarters of the fire to the right. The person on the left works three quarters of the fire to the left. Once an area is secure, both people continue to hold their fire position and approach the fire to the rear of the obstacle. Once the fire is put out, back away. Approach the fire from the upwind side, holding the nozzle at a 45 degree angle. Extinguish flammable liquid spill, first using a side to side sweeping motion. Raise a dry chemical stream to the bottom of the barrel and hold momentarily. Continue to raise the dry chemical stream, extinguishing the fuel source last. 
Approach the line of fire at a 45 degree angle. Hold the nozzle at a 45 degree angle from the ground and push the fire back. Walk the fire ahead of you and make sure that you don't get ahead of the fire. Be certain that you don't step in the actual liquid spill. Once the fire is out, back away and watch for a reflash. Approach the fire from the upwind side, holding the nozzle at a 45 degree angle. Cut the front edge of the fire, securing it. Once secured, back the fire with a wide sweeping motion from side to side until the fire is out. Once the fire is out, back away and watch for a reflash. Small spill fire can be put out with a five pound CO2 extinguisher. Pull the pin, raise the nozzle, and work the fire quickly. This extinguisher has a small capacity and is only capable of putting out very small fires. Many locations, a 15 pound CO2 extinguisher is available. This extinguisher should be used for larger spill type fires in which residue is a problem. Once the fire is out, back away and watch for a reflash. You have just seen a few examples of incipient stage fires. The products of fires may be hazardous to your health. These hazards can be divided into five categories. Fire gases, flame, heat, smoke, and insufficient oxygen. They have a variety of effect on humans, the most important being burns and the toxic effect which results from the breathing of heated air and gases. If you feel your group has a special fire hazard, check with your supervisor. Had some of these same fires taken place indoors, they would have required the use of personal protective equipment. If you encounter a fire where the use of personal protective equipment would be necessary, or if the fire is larger than you feel you can control or extinguish safely, evacuate the area and notify the fire department. The fire protection offered by the fire extinguishers is only as good as the extinguishers themselves. If you notice an extinguisher without a seal, report it immediately to your supervisor.